want to um, read a little more about the Barbarian Brothers. Um, but Okay, here it is. Here's an article. This is back in 1982 in Sports Illustrated. Um, all right, they have, let's talk a little bit about the dog. They have a dog and everything. It's a um, Newfoundland puppy named Chang. Okay, and then it lumbers around the parking lot outside Gold's Gym, Venice, California. Every day while the two boys are inside, turning themselves into monsters, Venice is a particularly lunatic suburb of Los Angeles, and it seems to be just about the right spot for the gym. Gold's, as most everybody knows, is the, pr is the world headquarters of bodybuilding. There is no anyone who is in attendant here. Bodybuilders are a delight to know, and assuredly no more loony than you or I. Always from... Remember that other people can hide their little voice vices, but with bodybuilders, the result of their obsession show. Besides, how can one not like a race of people whose conversation is strutted with stuff like, Today I'm going to do my pecs, because yesterday I did my abs. How can one not stand and wonder when a bunch of bodybuilders is assembled and there's a giddy sense that That everybody in the room has just taken a deep breath at any time of the day. It seems possible that Gold Gym will tear loose from its foundations and rise, mirrors, body oil and all, and floating lazily towards... Oh, that's stupid writing. This article's dumb. Well, it was good back in the day when I first got it. I was reading it. Me and my friends, we were like young. Jeez, 1982. I think I read it when I was in, I think it was 85. Um, I got an old issue of this magazine. All right. The truth is something about, or something almost that strange and wonderful is about to happen. Indeed, the story is about a way of scoop for even as you read it, the world of bodybuilding and possibly even powerlifting and God knows what else, what all else is on the verge of shocking change. Up until now, bodybuilding has been, at least most of the time, a peaceful and artistic and insulated world but no more the barbarians are here and, and a new order is at hand okay all right let me see here the barbarians are a team of two 25 year old giants named peter and david paul how sweetly how innocently those names fall upon the ear recently of hartford connecticut and narragansett rhode island they, they stand six feet and six feet one inches respectively Weigh 235 pounds, the other one weighs 245 pounds, and have over 20 and a half inch necks and 59 inch chests. Peter and David are fraternal twins, the third and fourth child of Lenny and Teddy Paul, or Teddy Paul, an athletic couple whom the boys totally exhausted before they finally left the home a few years ago. Oh, I gotta pause this. Now, the twins are busily exhausting Venice, specifically in the world of bodybuilding generally. Peter and David don't really train. They rampage. They invade the gym, falling upon huge weights and lifting them, and then piling more weights on. They lurch from station to station with a rolling, top-heavy gait, often growling loudly as they go. All right, that's dumb. That's... All right. Oops. My phone keeps going off. Tax. I gotta read it. All right. All right, back to the article. Um, yeah, I, I can read better than I can read out loud. I mean, reading out loud is a little different for me, but... Um, all right. I mean, I could have you guys just read this article, but I might as well read it. It's like I'm at school reading the kids, you know? Story time. All right, here we go. They don't claim to be the strongest men in the world, just the strongest bodybuilders, and definitely the strongest twins. Yeah, at that time they were. Um, being that it's two night 2019 right now, but this is back in 1982 when this article came out, and they moved out there in '79, I think I read. And uh, sorry about my chair squeaking. And uh, yeah, they were pretty. I mean, bodybuilders were strong back then, but these guys were pretty strong. Um, these guys were lifting heavier weights, and uh, that's what made them so unique compared to other guys. All right, um, I'm definitely this one. Okay, these guys are really radical, says Pete Jamoski, who was Mr. World of 1977. 
Pound for pound, they have greater muscle density than any bodybuilder in the country. And we don't even know what their peak will be because they're still climbing. Okay, that's... And now Peter stands trembling under a bar loaded with 535 pounds. Veins standing out like thick phone lines uh, along his neck. He glances to one side. How much fun can one guy have, he says. Yeah, I bet you did. I bet you didn't say that. But anyways, from behind him, David celebrates the left. Punch it, Peter. He yells, and then while Peter groans, he explains their motto. Yeah, their motto is, all right, dumb. Back in the day, it was okay, but all right. That's if it doesn't get more company than how many fellow. All right, let me see. They believe that to attain physical and thereby mental perfection, one must train like an animal, a beast, a barbarian. Traditional bodybuilding night... Uh, niceties are out. A carefully logged, um, long schedule on graduated weights in those long reflective moments spent staring into the mirror at the lyrical curve of the deltoid. That's stupid writing. Okay. Savagey does it. See, what you got, see, you've got to react in training, David says. You can't spend time thinking. You must learn to be mean by instinct. Get to the point where you're operating just on your uh, I, your id. Okay, indeed, that's how they got their names. It has nothing to do with the current movie, Corn of the Barbarian. What it, it's about is lurching around on our weights that no sane bodybuilder ever considered and then looking at each other one day through red eyes, murmuring, geez, this is barbaric. Well, they, other bodybuilders have used the weights they've used. When it comes to benching, at least. But they, they get, they're really strong in other exercises. All right, Peter, wait. Peter, wait no longer in hand, holds up one paw for attention. In order to do the impossible, he says, you've got to see the invisible. Then he blinks in sincere wonder at the majesty of what he just said. No, oh, okay. Let me put it another way, David said, so that you can understand it. This is very tricky philo um, psychology, psychological Territory, jeez, I don't have problems with that word. That's dumb. <clears throat> All right. Um, now, suppose you're training in a gym, say, and your girlfriend is there. And some great big guy comes in and whaps, smacks a girlfriend in the face and knocks her down. You got that? Well, now, do you look down the line of the dumbbells and pick up a 10-pound one? No, you just grab the 250-pounder that's lying at your feet and break it over his head. That's a barbarian reaction, and that's the way you should train. Okay, these guys aren't like that anymore. These guys are way more mature. Well, the other brother, he, I think he has, uh, he suffers from something. Schizophrenic, maybe, or something. He's, uh, really out there. He has a, he has a channel, but, um, when he, uh, emailed me when I was talking to those guys, when he would email me, it would just be constant, like, word salad. A lot of it wouldn't make sense. It might start out making sense, and then it would be totally just like word salad. That's what my one friend's mother said. She's a psychologist, Ph.D., and she says, oh, yeah, that's what that is. They've got to be medicated. He, he, too bad he's not medicated. He'd be so much normal. But he's really, you know, do, just doing weird things, I guess. Um. All right. David, not so late. I've got another one, he says. Oh, wait, I already... I already read that. All right. Let me see. Where am I? Uh, okay. Well, maybe so. Maybe not. But whatever it does, it plays in Los Angeles. Perhaps the community was fresh out of nutball fads when the Paul twins came along. In any case, the barbarians have suddenly developed the following. Small but intense. In bodybuilding, they're, they're getting national publicity and they're they're even receiving a, deg a degree of warm regard from the world of powerlifting, which has never exactly lavished affection on bodybuilders. The Barbarians actually made the cover of Powerlifting USA magazine. The story called them the Cheech and Chon of the Iron Game. The Los Angeles Times has done them, as has local television. As for national TV, the twins have already lifted Marv Griffin and will no doubt bench press Johnny Carson anytime now. Well, there's a picture of them carrying Merv Griffin. 
when they came out on the stage. But um, this is back in the you know early '80s, so Merv Griffin still had a show, and they've written a screenplay that they say has captured the fancy of a certain Hollywood studio. So I'll plot. It's about these twin brothers who are bodybuilders, see who are crudely lovable, totally without manners, but conversely very moral. Hmm. All right, but here's a wonder of it. So far, all of this has been done without the Barbarians ever appearing in a bodybuilding competition. Not one. Not Mr. America, Mr. Olympia, Universe, not even Mr. Ocean Avenue in Venice. <coughs> this phenomenon goes against all tradition. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, Franco Colombo, all of the noted bodybuilders paid their dues in an exhausting round of contests, each man carefully seeking and gratefully for small scraps of publicity, even though Arnold went on to be huge making movies and stuff. So did Lou Ferrigno, uh, TV shows and some movies. Franco Clummel didn't, though. He was he was a chiropractor, but he just kind of stuck back. He, he didn't want the limelight. Okay, let me see. But not the Pauls. They have their special reason for staying away from contests, and it's a, a part of a rather nifty plot that includes lumberjack costumes and eating 36 eggs a piece a day. That's 36. But first... To better understand the peculiar makeup of these two boys and their dog, one has to go back to the beginning. I'm supposed to be the oldest by three minutes, says Peter, but it's imp but it's possible I might really be David and he might really be me because the nurses put ID tags on the cribs, but not on us, see? So when they picked us up, who knows which baby was put down where. There were plenty of early signs of what we were going to turn out to be, David says. In nursery school, the teacher yelled at Peter for something, and I ran over and leaped on her and bit her on her leg really hard. I got expelled from nursery school. And you've heard about show and tell time, Peter says. Or says Peter. Well, in kindergarten, when David's turn came, he'd get up and show the class the fresh stitches on his head. Their older brother, Hap, now 33, and sister Debbie, 30, had grown up more or less peacefully. Hap graduated from Notre Dame, studied in Paris, and is now a respected veterinarian in Davis, California. Debbie is a nurse in Ithaca, New York. The entire family is eth ethically oriented. Dad was a track and star at Vermont. Mom has twice run the New York Marathon last year and... Four hours and eight minutes, 39 seconds. And they all are avid skiers. But the doings of the twins had everybody off balance for a time. We were well known in the hospital emergency wards, Peter says. We'd push each other's high chairs over, crash, and cut our heads open. We'd sell the legs off of antique furniture, and there wasn't anything we couldn't destroy with a screwdriver, says David. We were finally diagnosed as... Hyperactive. They separated us in kindergarten. Okay. A more a more searching series of tests at the first grade level established that both Peter and David had dyslexia, a learning disability. Peter was kept in public school and David went to a private Catholic school. They were reunited in, in the sixth grade. And by the high school, both were channeling their runaway energies into wrestling and football. I started in the eighth grade at ninety pounds and under, ninety pounds and under. Football, and I had to lose ten pounds to make it. Says Peter. Imagine a poor little school kid having to live on ice cubes and celery. Not long after that, as a fifteen-year-old, one hundred forty-five pounder, David was bench pressing three hundred pounds, a world record if we'd known back then. Inevitably their bodies began to distort and swell. It figures that David made all Connecticut in a middle guard in football in 1974 and that both boys made all New England in wrestling the following summer despite being awash in what they call negative energy because Peter says the stereotype is that if you're big and strong you're big and dumb. Ah, but the magic of pumping iron was already starting to cast its inexplicable spell, as the barbarians now put it. And after a run at five colleges between them, the twins opened a casual sort of gym called P&D's House of Iron. 
in Narragansett in 1977. Nice place, says Peter. I rather like the way it was furnished, says David. The mirrors all came from men's rooms at the University of Rhode Island. It was about that time that the twins began began having occasional run-ins with an Narragansett cops, mostly over barbarian driving habits. And it was also about that time that the big family conference took place. The way the twins tell it, their relations with mom and dad are strained and are in what might be called a state of testy cordiality. Things really, well, that was a hard <laughs> word for me to say. Jeez. I gotta read out loud more often. Alright. Things really began to go bad when the boys wanted to go to California to seek fame and fortune. Folks wanted them, for heaven's sakes, to settle down and do something, anything, saying. So David made a little speech to his parents. We're going to become really rich and famous, he said. And there will be national magazine stories and big television shows and all stuff like that. And when we get on Johnny Carson, he'll ask us if our folks were supportive about our career in bodybuilder, as bodybuilders. Now, now what do we say in front of the whole world? Do we tell them tell the truth or do we say that yes the folks were behind us all the way as Peter recalls that their dad growled why don't you, you just tell them the truth we must now face this pungent fact of life let me see here uh, nobody has ever heard of a well groomed barbarian true barbarians do not mince around trailing the faint woodsy scent of good cologne on this steamy afternoon in Venice, Peter is wearing a blue plaid flannel work shirt and tan work pants and lumberjack boots. The boots are untied and the laces trail back on each side. A red cowboy bandana is wrapped around his forehead. David is wearing a maroon velour hooded pullover that, from some angles, looks like the cover for a seti and, and gray sweatpants tucked into white cowboy boots. A blue bandana is tied around his head, Aunt Jemima style, and perched on top of that is a green and white mesh build cap, a few sizes too small. In spite of their stunning get ups, the twins look startlingly alike. For identification, David, David is the one with the two earrings in his left ear, one on a, one a plain gold loop, one with a modest diamond chip. 